All right, guys. What's up? Um, Larry Lords here. No, this is not about Game of Thrones, although Game of Thrones is kind of in the background. <laughs> um, this is the Incredibles 2 trailer um, breakdown. Um, I don't know if Disney is going to sue me because I have this video kind of um, playing, sort of. Um, but, uh, yeah, I... I you know this is my favorite movie. Well, some of my fans do. This is my favorite Disney movie, favorite animated film of all time. Uh, I was a kid when I watched the first one, man. And it was just like the things that they did with that movie were just incredibly groundbreaking. It was just a, it was just a brilliant story. It had some a lot of adult themes, but it was also obviously PG rated for kids. <clears throat> I could go on and on in depth. <clears throat> but in a generalized sense, it was just it was incredible. There you go. It was incredible. <laughs> um, so it was funny. I actually saw a tweet from Bob Odenkirk, who plays Saul Goodman in Breaking Bad, if anyone's familiar. Um, he tweeted the, this trailer link. And I was like, well, wait a minute. Why Why is Bob Odenkirk tweeting a trailer for The Incredibles? I thought he was just, you know, it, maybe he knew someone who made the film and he was just trying to promote it. Um, but it turns out he, it, w there's a character of his, a new character in this film that is voiced by him. And uh, we're going to look at the – again, I've, I've, I've already seen the trailer. I couldn't help myself last night. It was very late at night. I was just about to go to bed and I saw this and I couldn't help myself. So I've already seen the trailer, but I want to give kind of a breakdown for you guys. Uh, but first we'll watch it and then we'll kind of go into depth about what we think. So it's cool that they show the Underminers. So it, 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 it picks up right after the first film. Superheroes are illegal. We want to fight bad guys. I don't need bad guys. Defines who I am. Yeah. We're not saying you have... What? <laughs> Someone on TV said it. The comedy's not bad either. This is... It's all good, man. And then, oh my gosh, he's going to be a fucking full-time dad. <laughs> uh, oh my god. He's reading, like, what, Dr. Seuss? And he's, like, falling asleep. The first trailer seemed to say that there was going to be a lot more Jack-Jack in this film. It's a nice, it's a nice idea. <laughs> Still Samuel L. Jackson. Oh, there's the monster from the uh, first film. Of course. Edna Mode. Done properly. And then, and here we go. June 15th. Oh my god, this is official. This was the other thing. It gave us official release date. Oh, I mean, I, again, this is a huge, this film, the first film was a huge part of my childhood. And it, it, there was a lot of transitions going on when I was around 8, 9, 10 years old. And the film just means a lot to me because of that. And for so, 15, how many, I mean, 2018. 2018 to 2004 when this came out. Like 14 and a half years, almost 15 because this film was originally supposed to come out in summer 2019. I'm not sure if you guys knew that. Um, but that's just, that's incredible, dude. Um, I, I keep using the word incredible. Uh, Non-ironically, even though the film is called that, I apologize. Fucking hell, it's not, I'm not trying to be cliche here. Um, so it seems like the plot of this film is... Because again, we didn't know what the plot would be. Because a lot of people thought it would be Jack-Jack grown up. Um, trying to deal with his uh, wide array of powers because all of the other superheroes in the Incredible Family had like one power. You know, Dash could run fast. Violet had her invisibility and force field kind of built in. Mr. Incredible had his strength. Elastigirl, Mrs. Incredible had her stretchy arms, kind of like Mr. Fantastic. Um, but um, and then Frozone had his freeze powers so and then there were the other superheroes that syndrome killed off and that whole story that we saw in the first film so jack jack seems to have a combination of a lot of different powers you know turning into a fire beast turning into like a giant monster baby 
uh, you know, laser eyes disappearing. Like, he's got all these crazy powers. Um, and it really kind of makes you think, like, if you remember the ending, obviously this is spoilers, but this movie's been out for 14 years. If you think about the ending of The Incredibles 1, when Syndrome was trying to take Jack-Jack, I mean, if he had succeeded, imagine the, like, the killing machine he could have turned Jack-Jack into by, like, stealing him and growing, you know, making him forget his real parents and having him and Syndrome rule, like, I mean, I know Mr. Incredible and the family would go to, you know, we would be relentless trying to track down Syndrome and fucking get him back. But at the same time, that's just, it, it's interesting. Again, I, it seems like they're going to do more of a parenting film. It's almost like, um, I'm thinking of an old, like, Cheaper by the Dozen. Anyone see that movie where the mom goes away on a book signing deal and then the dad has to deal with 12 children and that's the whole plot of the film, like, how he deals with that uh, from a parenting perspective? Um, so now they have this this plot. So there's this tycoon who's voiced... So that's Bob Odenkirk, Saul Goodman, who voices the tycoon, who wants a br new brand of superheroes to kind of jump into the market and um i guess so mrs incredible takes over the brand she's the brand and this is something that he does for her maybe she can relive this is almost like because mr incredible tried to relive his glory days in the first film so maybe this is his wife's chance to relive her glory days but in a more direct uh, marketable way because again mr incredible had to do it under the radar it was all of that stuff with um what was her name the woman that syndrome had um i forget i don't know if it was it wasn't vi i forget i forget her name because it was that gray-haired woman the woman that mr incredible like picked up and threatened to crush her and then syndrome's like oh it's a little dark for you and that i forget her name but um that was all under the radar she made that offer but it was all just a trap so that syndrome could get what he wanted so now, we don't know what the intentions of this tycoon is. Maybe he could have dark intentions just like Syndrome did. Although, who's to say what he really wants? Again, we don't know his backstory. We don't know who he is. The first Incredibles film showed us uh, B -B -B Buddy, was his name? Incrediboy, Buddy, whatever you want to call him. Uh, and so we had that piece of information so that later in the film when Syndrome was revealed you had a reference point, which was kind of a, re a pretty big reveal. Um, so we don't know who this tycoon's going to be. I like that the film picks up with the underminers, that they don't just skip that, because that's how the first film left off. Because it was more or less like, oh, um, the family is going to fight crime together. And this is just the generic villain that's going to close out the first film for us. And uh, that's how we're going to leave it off. But... Now, there's actually a fight scene where they fight the Underminers. Uh, it's obviously probably not going to be a, fo a focal point of the film. I don't think so, unless that's going to come into play later in the film. But, I again, I think it's just a leftover Easter egg from the first film to kind of conclude it and say, hey, we're concluding this arc with the Underminers. They were just those little... Yeah, who are... I don't even know who the fuck. They look like mole people who are come up from the ground, that giant drill, remember in the first film, and then they suck Mr. Incredible into like a vacuum thing in the trailer. Um, it was pretty cool to see that continuation, but um, yeah, so again, mo most of this plot is going to be uh, uh, Mrs. Incredible representing the brands for this tycoon in whatever roles that he needs for her. Uh, and then Mr. Incredible is going to be trying to act like a dad, uh, it seems like Frozone is helping, I guess. I mean, he's the one who came with the business card. Like, you see in the trailer, he comes with the business card uh, right here. Yeah, he gives he gives Miss, Mrs. Incredible the business card. Um, and um, he, he makes the offer originally. He says, you know, the tycoon. Um, and so, DevTech. I actually didn't even see this. DevTech. So, this is the trailer. You see Mrs. Incredible, actually, she gets her bike and she gets on the plane, dev tech. Um, he, this guy actually kind of looks like an animated Saul. Like, look at him. Like, he's got all the wards on his wall here. He's got some uh, 
some sort of alcoholic beverage. He's got like a, a glass for, you know, a wine glass. Uh, he actually kind of looks like, <laughs> he looks like an animated Saul Goodman. I love it. He's throwing the basketball. He's got all the quirks. Again, if anyone's seen Breaking Bad and knows the character of Saul Goodman, he's kind of a goofball. They gave him his own spinoff show, Better Call Saul, which is also very good. Um, so I, I think that's that's kind of cool. Where does he align in the events of the first film? Was he just MIA or was he just some sort of tycoon that had investments in other business and now he wants to move into superheroes? Uh, who knows? But uh, I think it's a cool plot point. And I, I just hope that the our heroes don't get sidelined for the entirety of this movie because that was the plot of the first one you know they were sidelined while Mr. Incredible went off and did his thing but then when Mr. Incredible was in danger they were called to action and then that brought out their inner character and how they could contribute because their powers were suppressed they lived in a world where superheroes were no longer needed because of all the legal shit that Mr. Incredible went through and so being called to action with the threat of syndrome brought their brought their inner powers back out. Uh, so is this just going to be a role reversal? Because now Mr. Incredible's staying at home and Mrs. Incredible is now the superhero that's going out. But again, she's known to the public. Like, you see some of the things she's doing in this trailer. Uh, she's got a bike. Look, she, it's, it's all like sponsorships. She got her own bike. That's like a big thing. Uh, she leaves through the little secret cave. They're back. Um, there's the scene of Mr. Incredible trying to do math with, uh, Dash. I, I mean, I was already laughing. I was already cracking up at some of the jokes in this film. Um, him telling him a bedtime story, falling asleep. Um, here's a drill. Oh, this is, actually, yeah, this is a drill. This is, I guess maybe this is the scene where the underminers are still attacking. So I think that, isn't this Mr. Incredible right here? Because that could be a separate scene, you know? Oh, yeah, because look, they're on top. So this must still be the Underminer scene. Because look, now they're on top. Um, and this is her. This is her in her new role. Because look, look, she's got like fans. I mean, again, it's very different than the Mr. Incredible. Because Mr. again, Mr. Incredible, it was all under the radar. And now she's got fans. She's got the little logo right here. So there's a lot of branding that's kind of going into this. Um... <laughs> I love how crazy, look how crazy he's getting. Violet's here. Look at, he's, he's like, oh my god, I'm losing my mind. Jack, Jack disappearing. So, it's, there was an animated short that wasn't part of the film. But the babysitter that they get to watch Jack, Jack in the first film, you see her going crazy dealing with the baby. Very similar to how Mr. Incredible's going crazy. And then... They bridge the gap because then Syndrome shows up at the house and says, hey, I'm just, you know, he, he shows up in his full cape and everything minus the, the disguise with the eyepiece. And then that's where he takes Jack-Jack, basically. Um, and so they bridge that gap. And I think it might have been a bonus featurette or something. It wasn't part of the film. But I'm just seeing similar themes to how the babysitter dealt with him in comparison to how the dad is. Um, and he gives him the cookies and he's freaking... Turns into like a Barney type purple monster and wow. And then does he seek, of course, at the end, probably the most notable character, Edna, seeks advice. Look at him. He's got the bangs, the freaking the dirty, scruffly, uh, blondish hair and the and strands in front of his face. Five o'clock shadow. Yep, this was the scene I think from the trailer. Yeah. Yeah. So he's just, I think this is probably going to be a theme for a lot of like, like it's, it's a different part of parenting. I, I like how the family dynamics are, 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 are explored. In the first film, it was a midlife crisis type of situation. Mr. Incredible missed what made his career, his career. He wasn't some desk jockey, as you saw in the first film that he hated. He was a superhero at heart and he had been suppressed. And this was about a man breaking free of a midlife crisis and trying to reevaluate his life on a psychological level and how his family dealt with that. And now I think parenting is going to be one of the next big themes for him. If, you know, if we're saying that this is his story and he's the main character, uh, you know, we'll have to see. Maybe Mrs. Incredible gets a lot of the airtime too now that she's the face of this brand for this tycoon guy. 
Uh, we'll have to see. Um, now, I do forget, what was the um, runtime? Incredibles 1. Let's see. What was the length of the first film? I'm trying to see how long the first film was. Oh, okay. One hour and 56 minutes. So it was just about two hours. So are we going to... Are we going to expect the same length from this? Again, I would. I, I like that. I, I think however long you need to make it to make it an effective film. And this film has been in development for so, so long. How many stupid car sequels, planes... And again, these are all animated shows that are mainly for kids... Uh, maybe teenagers, if you want to push it that far. But this film in particular always had an adult feel to it, and it's nostalgia on the on the biggest scale for me. And that's that's the reason I'm covering it first of all, because again, and any of my fans, if you guys are fans of The Incredibles, put it in the comments. Tell me what you're looking forward to. What do you think of the plot now that the plot's kind of been revealed? Apparently, this was revealed during the Olympics, which I had no idea about. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I've been watching the Olympics a little bit, but I've been busy, so I didn't have a chance. So, again, I only saw this from freaking Bob Odenkirk tweeted this, and I saw his tweet about it. So, um, awesome. And I'm going to try to stop saying incredible, because that's going to be a cliche. Um, so, I'm excited Yes, I'm excited. I'm very excited, as you can tell. Uh, so June 15th, I am going to try to go to this film on release day. And then when I get back, I'm going to do a film review of, of The Incredibles 2. And much like I did for The Last Jedi, although I hope and pray to God that the experience that I had with The Last Jedi is not in any way the same experience that I have with this movie because... You know, Star Wars, and that's another, Star Wars was another franchise growing up as a kid that defined my childhood, and for Ryan Johnson and Disney to absolutely destroy Star Wars with The Last Jedi, it broke me a little bit, man, and I, I will not see Episode Nine on release. I will not, I, I'm still contemplating whether I want to see the new Han Solo movie on release. Uh, I know Rogue One was good, and I know I should probably give the films that are separate from this new garbage trilogy a chance. But we'll have to see. I mean, this, movie, this this video is not about Star Wars. But what all I'm saying is that I hope The Incredibles 2 is done properly. It seems like it will be. Like, the, 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 what I'm seeing and what I'm getting from this is that the feel from the first film is very much present here. Okay? The jokes, the comedy. You know, you got Samuel L. Jackson back as Frozen. You got the original voice actors, except maybe for Dash and maybe one of one or two of the kids, because you know obviously puberty hit the the whoever was playing Dash originally obviously grew up, um, so they're probably gonna have to find another voice actor who who sounds like him. But to be fair, when he was in the trailer speaking, I didn't notice a voice like the voice any different. Like it almost sounded like the same voice actor was voicing him, but I know that's impossible considering fourteen years have gone by. So. Um, Unless those recordings were done way, way, way a long time ago, and Brad Bird is just just was holding out on those audio files for years, um, so yeah, this is this is this is inc I keep I, I keep um, I, I I'm not even saying it intentionally. I keep saying the word incredible by accident. <sighs> oh my god, guys, 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 this is cool. This is awesome. Again, I'm sorry I couldn't really re like I'll do a reaction. This is more of a, re a review because I I watched it. Again, I was up late last night, and I saw the tweet, and I watched it, and now we're getting it, baby, so I'm, I'm excited. So, so here's to June 15th. Um, that is the day later on some point I will be reviewing it. Um, maybe I can bring in a guest with me. I don't know. I mean, I watched that film, the first one, with my, with my siblings. It was a film that was on VHS in my fucking, my mom's old car. And we used to watch that whenever we would take road trips. It was one of many VHS films that we owned. And I, uh, you know, I don't know. I, it, my siblings are busy on a day-to-day -day basis. I, I had my brother, brothers, plural, for 
the Game of Thrones reaction videos for season seven. Um, so any of you who watch those are familiar with them. Uh, but we'll have to see. It it depends who's available and when. Um, I'll get a better. It's only again. It's only February. It's fe- well it's February fifteenth. So how many months? You know, I mean, one, two, three. So four. So this is exactly four months away from the release of this film. So there's still a lot of time for me to figure out how I'm going to view it and how I'm going to handle it. So, um, so yeah. So with all that said, thank you guys very much for watching. Um, if you're a fan of this film. Uh, put your predictions or anything below. Um, just if you're excited, just whatever. Anything about the film, um, I'm excited. And ironically, not ironically, I think the film is going to be incredible. Peace out.